This is Mrs. Alexander, and this is your 4.3 front load about heart dysfunction and cholesterol. Let's first watch a short clip about what is cholesterol. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a fat-like substance that plays a vital role in every cell of your body because it's a building block for cells and hormones. The cholesterol you have in your body comes from your liver and your diet. It's important to understand that there are two types. LDL and HDL. The first type, LDL cholesterol, travels from the liver and the stomach into the gut, where it's absorbed into the bloodstream and travels to the body's tissues. When there's too much of this type of cholesterol in your bloodstream, it can build up, narrowing your arteries. This is why this type is sometimes known as bad cholesterol. When there is too much cholesterol in your bloodstream, it's known as having high cholesterol. This is a key risk factor in the development of heart disease. The second type, HDL cholesterol, also travels from your liver and stomach to the gut, where it's absorbed into the bloodstream. However, unlike bad LDL cholesterol, HDL is returned to the liver where it's broken down which is why it's also known as good cholesterol. So let's talk a little bit more about what exactly cholesterol is and why we need it. You first need to know that cholesterol is a fat, it's part of the lipid family, and it's not soluble in water, meaning it doesn't dissolve well in water. It moves around our bloodstream, um, but it can't move on its own, so it needs to attach to the proteins and the lipids. That's why we call it a lipoprotein. Cholesterol is super important in our bodies. So we want to go over some myths and some facts about cholesterol. Here's a few things that cholesterol does for our body. It stabilizes our cell membranes and it helps our cells communicate to one another. It helps with our steroids and it helps with our hormones and vitamins such as vitamin D. It helps with our bile and our acids which are important to digest things such as fat. It also helps coat our nerves and that makes up the myelin sheath that are surrounding our nerves so that way our nerve cells don't short out and cause uh, sporadic nerve impulses to occur. You'll need to know the major functions of cholesterol for the end of course test and for your test. So understand it forms up cell membranes. It is needed before you can have steroids and hormones in your body like estrogen and testosterone. It also helps with vitamin D production and movement. It also helps with bile and it also helps with your brain synapses. Again, some facts. Know that it's a lipid or a fat. It's necessary for your proper functions of cells. And you'll need to know about the two different types, HDL and LDL. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about the differences between those two. Um, sometimes you might have heard of them referred to as the good fats and the bad fats, or the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. So let's t talk a little bit more about that. Um, understand that we'll learn how to measure our cholesterol levels and our scores, is what they call them, in order to determine if you have a higher risk for a heart disease. So let's talk about good and bad fats. In class, we learned about saturated and unsaturated. You should remember that saturated fats are the type that are worse for you. They're solid at room temperature, and they generally come from animal fats whenever you eat things like dairy products, chips, pastries, meat. Their chemical structure looks like the one pictured above. Saturated fats are completely saturated with carbon and hydrogen. They don't have any double bonds. They're all strictly single. This allows them to build up on top of each other and create solid fats at room temperature. Unlike the bottom fat, unsaturated fats, which have a double bond between two of the carbons pictured below. We sometimes refer to those as the slippery or the kinky fats because they're kinked tails instead of straight tails when you look at them molecularly. Back to saturated fats. Again, these are not heart healthy and they raise your low density lipoproteins or your LDL levels. We'll get more into that later. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, come from nuts, avocados, olives. These are liquid at room temperature. At room temperature. They're called unsaturated because they're unsolid. These are the thing, types of fats that slide through our arteries and veins and we digest them. They're, they're liquidy and they do a lot better for our heart. You might often hear the term omega-3 fatty acids that come from fish. That's the one exception when you think of animal fats. Um, they help our heart and they help our brains. That's because you need cholesterol to help your brain function. In just a few slides, we'll talk about the difference some more about HDL and LDL. But understand that HDL, the good type of cholesterol fats, come from unsaturated, and the 
type of fats that are worse for you are saturated or LDL cholesterol. So let's talk about some myths when it comes to HDL and LDL. You need to know that high density lipoproteins, HDL, they both have a job. We need both types of cholesterol, but it, it all has to do with if your numbers are too high or too low. So for HDL, notice the little picture here, it shows it like a little angel, and then LDL shows it looking like a little devil. An easy way to remember is that we want a high amount of HDLs. We want that to be really good and high because it can actually help remove the bad or the low density lipoproteins. Think of low as below and high as above when it comes to angels and demons or good and bad. The job of HDL is to carry cholesterol from the arteries to the liver to be digested. So HDL's job is actually to remove the LDA, LDL when it's done. So the LDL is actually good for us. It's, it's got the job to carry all the cholesterol to the cells. And cells need cholesterol. It's just when we have too much LDL is when we're in a bad place. So understand the myth when people say that one's good for us and one's bad for us. No, we need both types of cholesterol, but we need them in a good ratio. So we'll talk about that ratio and we'll talk about the score next. So know the difference between HDL and LDL. The LDL are larger and they carry more cholesterol. They can stick around in our arteries. That's when they become bad. And they are necessary for our cells to function. So we still need them. Optimal. We want less than 100. So we want our LDL number to be lower than 100. And we want our HDL le levels to be higher than 60. Um, the higher, the better. Because the higher we can get our HDLs, it kind of evens out the ratio between LDL and HDL. This helps remove the excess or the extra LDL in our system. So how do you figure out your cholesterol score? Well, in terms of good and bad cholesterol, nowadays we kind of look at an overall score that you want to have. And total cholesterol is what we call that score. Desirable is that you want less than 200 total cholesterol score. How you figure that out is you take your HDL plus your LDL, and then you divide by 5. If that number is less than 200, then you're in a good range. 200 is okay as well, but anything over 200, you're borderline. Anything over 240 is super high. Here's a little chart to show you those levels. Again, optimal is to have less than 100 LDL and more than uh, 60 HDL. I know this one says um, more than 40, but if you have 40, you're considered having a low LDL. So that 60 number, like we spoke about here, um, having higher than 60 is a good thing that we want to have. So 60 or, or more is good. So having 40 or less HDL is bad, and having higher than 100 LDL is bad. When your LDL level is too high, it just simply means that you have too much cholesterol being brought in by the cell, and this can build up in our arteries and cause plaque. It causes atherosclerosis, which is the condition in which your plaque is causing your arteries and veins to close up and the lumen or the opening is becoming too small and it's causing your blood pressure to go high because it's putting more pressure on your arteries. LDL having too low means that you're not getting rid of that extra cholesterol. Your HDL, there's not enough of it to kind of clean up after the other kind of cholesterol. So what does food have to do with it? We always talk about food and cholesterol and what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. You can't stop eating cholesterol completely because everybody's body has cholesterol in it and it makes it naturally. All cells make cholesterol and that cholesterol level should be at a certain level. If you have lower than 75% of cholesterol, then your body will start to make more because you need it to transport things like hormones and proteins. Um, when you eat on average diet, Diet, not dieting, but just your average person that eats normal, not super overeating, not undereating. You, you add about 300 to 500 more milligrams of cholesterol per day. Even when you eat foods without cholesterol, the carbs, the fats, and the proteins that you eat go to your liver. They be broken, become broken down, and they release carbon, and it turns it into cholesterol. So you're making cholesterol anyway. There are some things we can do to cause our cholesterol to, um, to improve or to not improve. And so environmental, things like what we eat and how often we exercise can affect our cholesterol scores. And then sometimes, genetically, there's nothing we can do about it. Some people just have a higher cholesterol score in general because of the way that they've inherited a mutation. This mutation or this disease that some people have is called hypercholesterolemia. So hypercholesterolemia is 
a disease in which you have too high cholesterol. It's a major risk factor when you go to the doctor, they'll check your cholesterol, and that'll put you in a category for having higher risk for stroke, heart attack, and different types of heart disease. What can you do to keep your cholesterol levels healthy? Well, I mentioned diet and exercise. So limit the trans fats and the saturated fats because they cause your LDL to increase. You're already making LDL, so you don't need to increase it anymore. Eat fats that have unsaturated uh, type of fats. So fish, nuts, vegetables, those things help increase your HDL. So reduce foods with LDL and increase foods that have HDL. Exercise daily, maintain your weight. Stress and smoke cause your blood pressure to go up, and that can cause your LDL levels to increase. And medications are needed if you are one of those people that have family high cholesterol or genetic cl cholesterol. So let's talk about the meds that some people have to take. Statins are a big group of common cholesterol medications. They work by lowering your LDL. So they help get rid of some of the LDL that your body is naturally making too much of. Or if your diet is really poor and is, is high in LDLs or um, saturated fats, statins help alleviate that. Side effects. Take statins. It can lead to things like muscle weaknesses, pain, even in the heart, since the heart is a muscle, so you're taking it to prevent a heart attack, but it can cause your heart to hurt anyway. Some patients have even said that they've had am amnesia, which is when you forget about things or forget what was going on for previous minutes, or sometimes it can last for hours. Medicines like statins can cause headaches, dizziness, and liver dysfunction. That'd be bad if your liver stopped working because your liver is what's responsible for keeping your LDL and your HDL levels equal. Besides statins, um, we also have ACE inhibitors or ACE inhibitors. Let's talk about how they actually biologically both work. Statins actually will reduce in, or inhibit um, the enzyme HMG CoA reductase. So that enzyme will actually cause your cholesterol to be produced naturally in your body. So if we can prevent our body from producing our LDL, that's what we're doing. We're trying to prevent our body from producing as much as it normally does, which is too much in people that have it genetically. So we prevent or we inhibit our natural enzyme, which is causing us to produce LDL. Whereas our ACE inhibitors are pharmaceutical drugs that actually treat hypertension, so they help lower blood pressure. So let's talk about this big fancy work, hypercholesterolemia. It is a genetically inherited disease it's autosomal dominant. It causes people to have high cholesterol naturally. It's a mutation. It's called the FH mutation, abbreviated for familial hypercholesterolemia, basically high cholesterol that runs in your family. And the mutation of LDL receptors, so the parts that receive LDL, there's a mutation there, so it's causing us to produce more LDL than normal, and it builds up in our bloodstreams. The FH mutation is dominant, autosomal dominant, meaning it's not inherited sex linked. It's just anyone can get it, but if you only have one capital letter, it's the same as if you have both capital letters. So it's not recessive. So if you look below, two F's capitalized, you have the disease, one big F, one little F, a carrier, you still have the disease, even though you're a carrier in this case. Let's look at what FH looks like under gel electrophoresis. So on the right, you see a picture and you see some bands. You see two little F's have one band. Um, capital F, capital F have two bands, and then Big F, little f, have three. This shows the gel electrophoresis that we've used in class. Remember, PCR, polychain reaction, is used to make more copies. They load it into the gel. Restriction enzymes will cut the gene in certain places and run the fragments. If one fragment shows up, then you're recessive and you don't have it. If two or more show up, then you do have it. Two fragments means you're autosomal completely dominant and homozygous dominant. If you have three fragment, that means you have the gene for recessive and the gene for dominant, but you're kind of out of luck because all you need is one gene for being dominant. So in this case, the same rules apply with our gel electrophoresis. Uh, DNA is charged negatively, so it moves towards the positive pole, and the shorter fragments will move further. Notice on the far left, it shows the shortest fragments move the furthest. The FH mutation leads to atherosclerosis. It's the buildup of the plaque in the arteries from the LDL, and that causes reduced blood flow and high blood pressure, which high blood pressure then in turn can cause things in your extremities, fingers and toes to be tingly, your brain to malfunction, strokes, heart disease, heart attack, those kind of things we want to stay away from. So uh, study up over this stuff, and we'll get a chance to use gel electrophoresis, this unit, in our class.